me, I'd appreciate it. Hey, Mike, it sounds a little muffled. I don't know if I... Does it seem, sound a little muffled to you? Maybe it's a little strong. You can back that off a little bit. I don't think you're going to need it that much. Um, anyway, good to see you out tonight. Even back me down a little more. It just seems like I'm a little strong up here. Ethel's saying, yes, I am. Yeah, yeah, that's a little better there, Mike. Thank you. Let's uh, open in prayer, and we're going to get right into this study. I'm excited about it, and uh, this is one of those things. I'm, I got five weeks, and that's it, so I have to get her done. And so I also want to be able to have some feedback from you and uh, let you chew on this as we go through this, so I want to have some time that you can give feedback to. Father, we thank you tonight for an awesome, awesome day. Uh, 50 plus degree day and we just thank you lord for the weather we've been having and we give you thanks thank you lord for the dinner we had tonight warm place to be able to meet for family friends and for your word as we get into it tonight thank you lord for the promise that not only do you promise us heaven but you promise us to reward us and we're going to see this clear teaching of scripture Open our eyes to this subject, I pray. Amen. Amen. I believe this study that we're headed into has the power to totally transform your life to the point where how you live currently looks completely different than how it looked maybe five years ago, or how it's going to look is going to look completely different than how it looked five years ago, or even maybe five days ago. I want to encourage you to let... The scriptures speak to you and determine what you believe about this subject. Because I know as we get into this, there are going to be some beliefs that need to be torn down that you've held. And I don't think you've held them in a wrong manner. I think your motive has been correct in holding to them, but you have not been biblically correct. And many Christians are not biblically correct in their understanding of rewards. And we're going to take a look at that. I want to start with an oft-held belief when it comes to rewards, and here it is. People think that if they want to be rewarded in heaven, that that is a carnal, fleshly desire on their part. You ever come across that? Well, just being with Jesus ought to be enough. And that's what you'll hear. You'll hear other statements like, and I've heard it as a pastor, like this. As long as I make it to heaven... That's all that matters. Now, I get that. That's certainly better than going to hell. And I, so I, I get the sentiments of that statement. Others put it like this. Just making it to heaven is enough for me. Uh, some of you have seen me wear this. Uh, uh, I'm having some more made. I'm changing the uh, statement. Uh, by the way, I got a good deal. Uh, uh, I got a good deal. Walmart. Now, this one here I bought, I think, last season. But Walmart puts their seasonal stuff on sale. And it'll be less, a lot of times, than half price. And so I was over there. uh, My wife's in Tijuana, and she's having fun down there. And she's spending some money down there, so I figure I can spend some money up here. And so I went to Walmart, and I got five of these different shades and five of these for less than 80 bucks total. It was a deal. Uh, the one was like 63 bucks, and it was marked down to 27 bucks. And so I gave it to Christy Vandaloon. She has a print shop. And I gave her these and several of my shirts I've had put on the back because I like to have a saying when people see it on the back, eternity, too long to be wrong. Okay? It's too long to be wrong. I share that with you, not only for what we're going to study about Beliefs, but we're going to be studying about behavior. Your belief determines where you're going to spend eternity. More about this, and he drills this home in his book. Your belief determines where you're going to spend eternity, but your behavior determines how you're going to spend it on that side. More about that in a second. So, I just start with this. Eternity's a long time to be wrong. And so if you know what you believe about your behavior and how that's going to affect eternity, now's the time to change that behavior. Okay? 
has nothing to do about where you're going to spend eternity. Where you're spending eternity is based on what you believe. How you spend it, the rewards that you're going to live with, is based on your behavior. More about that a little later tonight. Some scriptures. Uh, By the way, before we get to the scriptures, on the surface, these statements like, just making it to heaven is enough for me, those kind of statements, they may sound commendable, but How do they fare when we weigh in with Scripture? And that's what we want to look at tonight. You see a whole host of Scriptures on that page. Don't get worried. We're not going to read every one of them, okay? I thought about it, but I'm just going to point out some to you, and so stay with me. Drop down, you'll see a second one down is Ruth chapter 2. What I want you to see in the Old Testament, the Old Testament individuals, uh, they had this belief and this mindset, and it carries over into the New Testament that God rewards his people. They believe that. The Old Testament saints believe that. So Ruth chapter 2, verse 12 says this, May the Lord repay you for what you have done. May you be richly rewarded by the Lord, the God of Israel, on whose wings you have come to take refuge. Again, I just want to establish some of these Old Testament scriptures. They had the belief that God was a God that rewarded his people. You with me? And we're going to see how that carried over into the New Testament. Drop down a few there to 2 Samuel chapter 22. 2 Samuel chapter 22, if you look at verse 25, I believe uh, Karen has it up there on the screen. 2 Samuel chapter 22, verse 25. It says, the Lord has rewarded me according to my righteousness, according to the cleanness in his sight. Again, I emphasize The Lord has rewarded me. Then drop on down to Psalm 62. Psalm 62. Look at verses 11 and 12. One thing God has spoken, two things have I heard. That you, O God, are strong and that you, O Lord, are loving. Surely you will reward Each person according to what he has done. According to what he has done. Now drop down. Proverbs chapter 19. Look at verse 17. Proverbs chapter 19, verse 17. He who is kind to the poor lends to the Lord, and he will reward him for what he has done. And then Proverbs chapter 25, verse 22. In doing this, you will heap burning coals on his head, and the Lord will reward you. Anyone know New Testament-wise where that's found? Paul quotes it in one of his books in the New Testament about heaping coals on the guy's head when you do good to him. You Bible scholars. Romans 12. Uh, I think it's about 20, Romans 12, verse 20. Paul quotes from that passage of Scripture. Jeremiah 17. Jeremiah 17, look at verse 10. Jeremiah 17, verse 10. I, the Lord, search the heart and examine the mind to reward a man according to his conduct, according to what his deeds deserve. Now, that was Old Testament. Old Testament saints, it's clear, they believed that God was a God that rewarded his people for what they did, their behavior. Y'all with me? Let's see how that carries over into the New Testament. Matthew chapter 5. Matthew chapter 5, verse 12. By the way, does anyone have uh, the words of Jesus in red? You have a a Bible that has the words of Jesus in red. Anyone have that? At home? home? Uh, Some of you have it here is uh, Matthew chapter 5, verse 12. Is that in red? It is in red, isn't it? So this is Jesus talking here. Notice what Jesus says. Rejoice and be glad, because great is your reward in heaven. For in the same way they persecuted the prophets who were before you. I want to ask you, what did he mean by that? Rejoice and be glad, because great is your reward in heaven. Good question. What do you mean by that? He said it. 
Then drop down to Matthew chapter 6. He nails it over and over. He uses this word reward. By the way, uh, is that Matthew chapter 6? Is that in red? It's in red, isn't it? Why is it in red? Because Jesus said it. He spoke it. Matthew chapter 6. Look at verse 1. Be careful not to do your acts of righteousness before men to be seen by them. If you do, you will have no reward from your Father in heaven. <clears throat> My wife and I, we have this inside joke between us. If we hear someone patting themselves on their back for something they have done, we'll turn to each other and, well, hope they enjoyed that because they just got their reward. <laughs> and if you look at Scripture, basically, that's the truth. Be careful not to do your acts of righteousness before men to be seen by them. If you do, you all have no reward from your Father in heaven. Verse 2. So when you give to the needy, do not announce it with trumpets that the hypocrites do in the synagogues and on the streets to be honored by men. I tell you the truth. They have received their reward in full. Why? Because they received it just now. Instead of waiting for God to reward them. Verse 4. So that your giving may be done in secret. Then your Father who sees what is done in secret will reward you. Verse 6, when you pray, go into your room, close the door, and pray to your Father who is unseen. Then your Father who sees what is done in secret will reward you. Verse 16, when you fast, do not look somber as the hypocrites do, for they disfigure their faces to show men they are fasting. I tell you the truth, they have received their reward in full. And then verse 18, So that it will not be obvious to men that you are fasting, but only to your Father who is unseen. And your Father who sees what is done in secret will reward you. A few other scriptures. Matthew 16. Matthew 16, look at verse 27. For the Son of Man is going to come in his Father's glory with his angels, and then he will reward each person according to what he has done. And then flip over to Luke's gospel, the sixth chapter, verses 23 to 25. Rejoice in that day and leap for joy, because great is your reward in heaven, for that is how their fathers treated the prophets. But woe to you who are rich, for you have already received your reward. Woe to you who are well fed now, for you will go hungry. Woe to you who laugh now, for you will mourn and weep. Woe to you when all men speak well of you, for that is how their fathers treated the false prophets. And then 1 Corinthians chapter 3. Hang with me. We're almost done here. 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 8. The man who plants and the man who waters have one purpose, and each will be rewarded according to his own labor. And then Ephesians chapter 6. Ephesians chapter 6, look at verse 8, Ephesians 6, verse 8, because you know that the Lord will reward everyone for whatever good he does, and then Hebrews chapter 11, I don't know if he knows this or not, but if you've ever picked up, Pastor uh, Adam quotes this verse, probably more verse, uh, more than any other verse in the scriptures. And so I say it's his favorite. He has never told me it's his favorite, but I'm just saying by the amount of times he repeats it, it's his favorite, whether he realizes it or not. Hebrews chapter 11 verse 20 or uh, 11 verse 6 says, and without faith, it is impossible to please God because anyone who comes to him must believe that he exists and that he rewards those who earnestly seek him. And then drop down to verse 26. He regarded disgrace for the sake of Christ as of greater value than the treasures of Egypt because he was looking ahead to his reward. Who's he talking about there? He's talking about Moses. He went through what he went through. Why? Because he was looking ahead to his reward. He was counting on that. And then two more. 2 John, verse 8. There's only one chapter there. 2 John, verse 8. says this, watch out that you do not lose what you have worked for, but that you may be rewarded fully. And then Revelation 22 and verse 12, it's some of the last words that Jesus spoke. By the way, you'll see that it's in red in your Bible. 
Verse 12 of chapter 22 says this, Behold, I'm coming soon. My reward is with me. And I will give to everyone according to what he has done. Now, I know that was a lot. There was even more there. I would encourage you, if you're still questioning about whether rewards are God's idea or not, please take a look at the other ones. You see it's pretty clear in Scripture. And that, by the way, is not even exhaustive. There's about 40 scriptures or passages that I have listed for you there, and that's not an exhaustive list. Now, it is certainly enough scripture to give us an indication of what God has planned for us in heaven. You'll see it there in your notes. There's a blank. Heaven is a place of rewards. Heaven is a place of rewards. Why? Because God is a God of rewards. You've heard me say it before. It's worth it to serve the Lord. It's worth it. He's going to make it right someday. Whether it's made right on earth, here or not, someday he's going to make it right. It's going to be worth it. According to what Paul said in 1 Corinthians No eye has seen, no ear has heard, no mind has conceived what God has prepared for those who love him. We can't even conceive of it. He also said it in another passage. I consider that our present sufferings are not worth comparing to the glory that will be revealed in us. Now, here's what I want you to chew on, and I want some feedback. Now that you can see from Scripture quite clearly that God rewards his people... And there's a lot said about it in Scripture. How does that make you feel? Unworthy? Unworthy? Okay, somebody else. How does it make you feel? When you read these Scriptures, and there's a lot. We just covered a few. How does it make you feel? Overwhelmed? Overwhelmed? Conviction. Conviction. Somebody else? How does it make you feel? Happy? Happy? Faithful? Faithful? Thankful. 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 I want to know what people say more about, about Jesus. Okay. I want, I want to find out what, what he said. Okay. Somebody else? How does it make you feel? Encouraged? Encouraged? Oh, you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. So, like, if I end up in the plus, I'm going to be okay, and this stuff is fine. Yeah. It's, you know, you can't play a check and balance of hell. No. Hard with this. Because our sin, we can't work to pay for that. Uh, That's based on the blood of Jesus that washes us clean of that record. So, we don't really, if people understand it, we don't have a record to offset in the eyes of the Lord because the blood covers those sins. Now, let me ask you a soul-searching question. And as I normally am, I'm pretty open. I'm an open book. Uh, I'll probably relate more to where we're at right now and currently some of the things that my wife and I are doing and we've been excited about, but then I headed into this study (laughs) and it's like, are we going to be able to go that route that I was thinking. And she's in Mexico right now, so we can't process it together. Here's the question. Are you living your life in such a way that you will be rewarded? Are you living your life in such a way that you will be rewarded? Now, you've heard me talk about uh, the church has uh, paid me well for the size of church that we are. And I've invested that, and, we've, and that's why we're re- able to retire before uh, we're going on Social Security. Some of you have pinched that out. How is he going to do that? How old is he? When was he born? Well, he's retiring before he can get to even collect Social Security. Well, 
I'm a Dave Ramsey fan, and God taught me some principles. I taught you that principle two weeks ago about uh, be a disciplined life, and I'm very anal, and so we've been anal about investing, and so that's why we're able to do that. And you've gotten good deals along the way. And I've gotten good deals along the way. <laughs> Praise God for good deals. But here's the soul-searching question for me and for you. And I've given to the Lord. But does the way I give portray that I really believe what we just read from those scriptures? Because we can say that we're going to be rewarded and that we believe that. But how we're living, does it really convey that? Mm. Because I believe that that promise is going to be made. <clears throat> so. mm. Yes, Pastor Eric. I thought about it this way. Um, sometimes when you're in a, a, those situations where you think, oh, if I weren't a Christian, I would do this. <laughs> <laughs> those are like your opportunities, you know? And, uh, like in sports, you can't get a Division One title by playing community college ball. Yeah. So when you got that opportunity of trial, just think about it. Like, hey, that's your reward building time right there. Yeah. Somebody else. Yes. And really, thank you for sharing that because it, yeah, you definitely have to think about how you react, respond, and yeah. Let me just give you an example that's going on with Joyce and I. Uh, it's not that we're loaded and, and we're not, but we are blessed. God has blessed us. Where we're at right now, we've been looking at 15 to 25 acres in southern Iowa. There's a couple of different farms. There's one north of Bloomfield we're looking at right now. Uh, I thought about going down Friday and uh, looking at it. It looks good. It won't be on the market long for this kind of money. I'm looking at another piece over uh, southwest of Allerton, Iowa. And uh, we're going to go look at that when Travis and Heather get back here in a few weeks. And both properties are, uh, it's not a huge amount of money when you're dealing with property. It, it, everything's relevant, but it's, they're between 100 and 150000 and it's going to be a place where we'd build a little cabin. Okay? But here's the deal. Would the Lord rather me take that money and invest it to the other side? Now, please, I don't need any emails. <laughs> okay? <laughs> I'm just throwing myself out there. Okay, but that's what I'm wrestling with. And, and I, God's not a killjoy. I understand that. And you all know that uh, I have fun, and I spend money each year on my fun things that I do. I spent a fair amount of money on my deer hunting this year. My wife spends a fair amount of money on her dogs, and I believe that's okay. Okay? Uh, so I'm not a killjoy. But there is a balance. There is a balance. And so what I'm wrestling, I went into the study, and I was reviewing my notes. And we were excited. I talked with her on the phone the other night. Hey, honey, do you think I'd, go, I'd run down to Bloomfield? I said, but if I go down there, you need to give me permission. I'm sick and tired of doing this window shop, and I'm ready to pull the trigger. <laughs> and then I review these notes. Just telling you where I'm at. Do we really live our lives like we believe this, Jenna?
Yeah. That's a good point. Uh, with that in mind, let's, uh, let me keep moving here. With that in mind, let's take a look at Acts chapter 20. And then we're going to look at Luke chapter 6, verse 38. These two verses, I've had them memorized for years. But these two verses, it seems like they take on a different meaning once I begin to look at the subject of rewards. Now, notice what Acts chapter 20, verse 35. By the way, it's one of the few passages of Scripture other than the Gospels where the words of Jesus are in red. And part of that verse is in red. Is it not? Acts chapter 20. Look at verse 35. This is what it says. In everything I did, I showed you that with this kind of hard work, we must help the, the weak, remembering the words the Lord Jesus himself said, it is more blessed to give than to receive. And so as I'm preparing for this, I thought of that scripture and it jumped out. Why did Jesus say it's more blessed to give than receive? Why is it more blessed to give than receive. I remember years ago, the Lord brought me up short. I, I complained to him because he, he spoke to me one day and he said, I want you to give some money. I said, Lord, I'm tired of giving. He said, you want to have to be on the receiving end? Got your point, Lord. I'll gladly give. And so I've always viewed that verse from that passage, from that standpoint. I'd rather have to be and have it where I could give than have to go around asking. And that's how I've always viewed it's more blessed to give and receive. But my way of thinking has changed. It's more blessed to give and receive. Could it be it's more blessed to give than receive because the giver is going to be rewarded? Yeah. Yeah. And the Passion Translation says giving brings far greater blessing than receiving. Hmm. Kind of interesting thought. Just yeah. a new way to look at that. Now, go over and look at Luke chapter 6, back up. By the way, I had a class in Bible college. It was called Luke Acts. Why? Because the same guy wrote him. Luke chapter 6, verse 38. And I've had this, and, and you've heard this before. You've heard pastors talk about it before they receive the offering. Probably many times you've heard it. Give and it will be given to you. A good measure, pressed down, shaken together and running over, will be poured in your lap. For with the measure you use, it will be measured to you. Why? <laughs> Given it will be given to you. Kind of opens my eyes if I really believe that my behavior when it comes to giving affects the other side, it will be given back to me. I will be rewarded. It just opened my eyes to see those particular two verses in a little different way. Anyone question or comment? Yeah. Good word. Somebody else. Cheerful giver. Yeah. Cheerful giver. Yeah. John. I think a lot of times we think about the blessing being a monetary amount. Because you see people, at least I see people in life that have mountains of money but very unhappy. And I see people with a little bit of money, of money and being very happy. Yep. So my conclusion is it's really God that gives you the ability to enjoy life or enjoy what's given to you versus if you pursue to have stuff when you get it you, you're, you're not happy yep. but if you give your stuff away or do it God gives you that fulfillment that fulfillment only comes through God 
Yes. Good point. Somebody else? So a cabin in the pines might not be too bad. It may not. <laughs> Believe you me, I've tried to say, well, Lord, you know, I'd invite people down from the church, the guys who go down and hunt. We would use it for you, Lord. <laughs> and, and I would. But to me, I received that as a prophetic word. But, but to me, if we really believe this, that, and we're gonna, you're going to see Scripture is clear on this. If we really believed it, it would affect how we live today. And by the way, those of you that were at the annual business meeting Sunday, you know I'm not saying this because the church is hurting. We've had the best year ever in the history of the church, so I'm not giving this series because we need your money. We don't. It's not about you giving money to the church at all. So I don't want anybody feeling any, that, that has nothing to do with it. This just deals with me personally. I like to preach and teach on where I'm at personally, and this is exactly where Joyce. We're ready to retire and enjoy some of the fruits of our labor through the years, and God doesn't have a problem with that. But the issue is one of balance. How much? And that's what we're wrestling with. How much? He says on page 10, by the way, this is that little book. I tried to get on thrift books to see if they had it available, and I, they didn't have this one here. You can get it through CBD. It's going to cost you about 12 bucks plus uh, shipping. But, and it's well worth. I mean, this is a powerful, packed little book, uh, Life God Rewards by Bruce Wilkinson. I uh, highly encourage you to get it. He, he writes on page 10. Let me read it. Because there is a direct connection. Listen to this. Between, between something you do for him on earth and something great he will do for you in heaven. Notice that D, Jesus describes it as a reward for doing, which would distinguish it, for example, from a gift you receive for believing. Jesus teaches that there is a direct connection between something you do for him on earth and something great he will do for you in heaven. Let that sink in. Now let's look at Matthew chapter 16, verse 27 again. For the Son of Man is going to come in his Father's glory with his angels, and then he will reward each person according to what he has done. What does that mean? He said he's going to reward each person according to what he has done. Sometimes I think we read over that real quickly, and we don't understand the magnitude of that teaching. When you've done something for him, God's going to reward you for that. A couple points we're going to bring out in just a second. Look at Matthew chapter 19, verse 21. We often think that Jesus was pretty hard on this guy. But truly, he not only conveyed this to the rich young man that he had to give up everything, but he conveyed that to the disciples too. We're going to see that in a moment where Peter said, Lord, we left everything to follow you. What then will there be for you? So it wasn't just a rich young man that Jesus called to leave everything behind. He called that in his disciples. Look at verse uh, 21, Matthew 19. It says, Jesus answered, if you want to be perfect, go sell your possessions and give to the poor, and you will have treasure in heaven. Then come follow me. You can say, well, man, he was really being hard on him. He really wasn't. Jesus was just telling him the truth. If you really want to have great reward, brother, give everything you got because someday God's going to reward you for that on the other side. He was just trying to get that guy to see a principle. I wonder how well do we see that. And then Luke chapter 6. Luke chapter 6. Verse 22 and 23. Blessed are you when men hate you, when they exclude you and insult you and reject your name as evil because of the Son of Man. Rejoice in that day and leap for joy because great is your reward in heaven. You know, I, I feel terrible for those that are persecuted, that suffer physical pain. But once it's done on this side, their reward is great on the other side. I'm not trying to minimize their pain at all in saying that. I'm just saying, don't ever think that Jesus is not going to make that right. He will make it right. And then Luke chapter 14, look at verse 14. 
Uh, let's back up verse 13. But when you give a banquet, invite the poor, the crippled, the lame, the blind, and you will be blessed. Although they cannot repay you, you will be repaid at the resurrection of the righteous. Two things these verses suggest. Stay in your notes. Number one, it's also on page 11 of the book. Number one, God is keeping track of what you do. I've joked about it before. We've got an awesome church treasurer, uh, Bev. Uh, there'll be days she comes in here and she's at the end of the month and she's trying to balance and she's off a penny. <laughs> and she's like a pit bull, a hound dog, and she'll find that penny. And she has to find that penny. It doesn't matter if you're off a penny or a million dollars or a hundred bucks, you're still off. And on the church book, it's got to be to the penny. And so Bev does an awesome job being our church treasurer. She keeps account. She keeps track. But I want to tell you what, God's a better accountant than Bev. God's keeping track. Everything you do for him, not a thing gets by him. You can count on that. Those verses convey that. And number two, you have more to gain from serving him than what you imagined. You have more to gain from serving him than what you imagine. We cannot imagine what he has prepared for us. So when we go through the persecution, we go through the suffering, when we've given sacrificially, when we've really hurt, perhaps because of our giving, someday we'll be rewarded for it. That's the truth. That's not a cop out, that's not a Christian cliche. It's the truth. The question is, do we believe it? Do we believe it? Page 15. Anyone, before uh, we get there, uh, have a comment? I think we determine rewards on whether or not we get rewarded for the work we do. Hmm. We're going to get talking about that. I don't know if we're going to, we probably won't get to it tonight, but we will get to it. How much more people talk about the rewarding that he has this ability, but that doesn't be fun to touch God's media dollars to inspire people? Yep. Myself. Yep. You do a good job at that. Thank you. Okay, let's look at page 15 in the book. The teachings of Jesus show us that there are two keys that determine everything about your eternity, and I've already alluded to it when we opened up. Two keys that determine everything about your eternity. The first key is your belief. Just write that in your notes. Your belief. Your belief determines where you spend eternity. You can't earn it. Your good behavior doesn't earn it. Uh, You're not any better off with God because you've given a million dollars to him or you've sacrificed and you've served in the nursery for five weeks in a row. You, You don't get any better standing with God as far as where you spend eternity because you can't earn it. Where you spend eternity is based on your belief. Belief determines where you spend eternity. But secondly, behavior determines how you spend eternity. We've got a guy in the church. I love him dearly. And if you've ever spent any time with A.J. Abplanall, you know what I'm talking about. Uh, He has a very unique way of describing things. And one of his statements that, that you'll hear him say, whether he knows it's his favorite statement, I'm just saying I've heard him say it many, many times just as I have little quirks, that you're going to be so glad you won't have to hear those same old stories again over and over. But one of the things he always says is, I don't want to be in the cheap seats in heaven. (laughs) And if you've ever been to a football game or basketball saying, you know, the cheap seats are way way up in the high, you want to be down on the 50-yard line. (laughs) And so he's always talking about not wanting to be in the cheap seats. Seats. Behavior determines how you will spend eternity. So whether it's your belief or whether it's behavior, everything you do from your belief to your behavior matters. Okay? It matters. Not only your belief, but your behavior matters. And this study 
will show you how the harvest you have impacts your experience in heaven. So I shared with you, I'm going to be very honest, I'm in this time of reflection, uh, getting ready to switch gears and enter a different stage of life, and I'm evaluating the last 35 years. And sometimes I don't like what I see. And it's like, Lord, I wish I would have. I wish I would have spent... Those of you that are older, am I the only one that feels this way, or is that a... Is that a Good. Yeah. So at least I'm not, I'm in good company anyway. And maybe that's just a time, that, that's just what, as you're getting older, you reflect. Because you can't get those years back. So I would just encourage all of you younger, allow the voice of the elderly to teach you. So you don't have to make the same mistakes. Works do not determine where you spend eternity. Your belief does. Romans chapter 10. Verses 9 and 10 speaks about that. Have you believed in what Jesus did on the cross for your payment of sin? Hopefully everyone here, and I believe most of you, if not all of you have, you've placed your belief in Christ. And so your eternity is in heaven. Romans chapter 10, verses 9 and 10, that if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For it is with your heart that you believe and are justified, and it is with your mouth that you confess and are saved. So belief determines where you spend eternity. Behavior determines how you will spend it. The problem that we often get into when you start talking about rewards is that Behavior has often been downplayed because works cannot get you into heaven, and that's true. Works do not buy your way into heaven, but works in behavior does determine what kind of rewards you're going to get once you get to heaven, okay? It doesn't get you to heaven. Your belief gets you there. Your belief in what Christ did gets you there. But behavior and works do have their place, and that's what... We're going to be emphasizing here in this study. They determine how you will spend eternity in heaven. I wear this every day when I'm walking at the wellness center. Because I, I, I want everything in my life to be a witness. And so I know when those young gals go smoking by me, at least they're getting the message, you know. Eternity is a long time. So number one, you want to make sure your belief is right. It's a long time. It's forever. And your belief determines where you're going to spend forever. So you need to make sure your belief is in Christ so you spend forever on heaven's side. Okay? We get that. But don't stop there. Say, well, as long as I make it, that's the only thing. No, you, you really need to get a hold of this. You not only want to make it to heaven, but you need to understand that you're going to be rewarded with how you've behaved, and that reward is going to go with you for eternity. Let that sink in. For eternity. And so your behavior now is going to affect your, your rewards throughout eternity. How we live our lives on this earth determines our level of reward in heaven. With that in mind, let me ask you this question. And I'd like some feedback. Are you living your life like you believe that? And that's where my wife and I are at right now. You know, we're not George Soros or Warren Buffett. But we do have a little bit that God's given us. How does he want us to use that? More importantly, he gives us the choice how we want to use it. 
And then he lets us know, hey, Will, you're going to be rewarded when how, based on how you use that. So I can't complain to anybody else when I get to heaven. Oh, I wish I... No, I knew. See the heaviness of that? That's just where I'm at. I'm not trying to put any of that on you. I'm just, I am trying to make you stop and think. Now's the time to make a change. Now's the time to make it count. And again, I don't say that because the church is in some big financial strait. We're not. I just want you, you're going to spend eternity with Jesus. I want you to be rewarded while you're there. Someone, comment, question. Because I, be, I believe that that's true. And I believe that if you, and sure, we all sin and we all make mistakes and we all fall short. But if we listen and we follow how we're called, it, look at you, for example. You know, you could have, when you were called to be a pastor, you could have said, oh, I want to, I'm not, I mean, I'm not going to do that. Yeah. in my work, it gave me great joy. Mm -hmm. And I think that he just keeps calling us. You know? He does. The issue to me is uh, Mary Kay is, am I listening to him? Am I? Right. Because truly, I won't have anyone else to blame. If I'm complaining once I get to heaven's side, I wish I would. I wish so. No. I knew. And so God gives us all the choice, and we have to wrestle with that. Wrestle? We have to wrestle with that. Wrestle! Yes. You know, the Bible says in uh, Philippians chapter 2, verse 12, that we need to work out our own salvation. Now, that doesn't, that doesn't imply that we work to get saved, but we have to wrestle with concepts in the, in the Scriptures and apply them to our life. That, that's what... That's meaning we got to wrestle it out. And sometimes it's a process. And so you may go home, and you may not make any changes right now, but some of you may be irritated. Well, I can't believe he even said that. And then you're going to have to wrestle with this even as you go to work tomorrow. And sometimes it's a process. John. I get that, and that has been the traditional way most Christians have looked at that. Let me uh, just share a passage of Scripture. And, and notice what Jesus didn't say. He didn't rebuke Peter for making this comment. Uh, in Matthew chapter 19, this is right after the story of the rich young ruler. In verse 26, Jesus looked at them and said, With man this is impossible, not with God. He's talking about how hard it was to get into heaven because of your money. And then verse 27, Peter answered, We've left everything to follow you. Peter then asked the question, what then will there be for us? Now, notice Jesus didn't say, Peter, you shouldn't have such earthly thinking. He didn't. Notice how Peter or Jesus responded. Jesus said to them, I tell you the truth, at the renewal of all things, when the Son of Man sits on his glorious thrones, you who have followed me will also sit on 12 thrones, judging the 12 tribes of Israel. That's a pretty high up position that they're going to have. Now, I would agree, John, uh, with you that whew, there's a certain element when you, when that last beat of your heart, I'm just running to hang on to the cross, and I would encourage you to do the same thing. I'm not trusting anything that I've ever done. <laughs> I'm running to the cross. I'm hanging on for all I'm worth. And just the relief, I'm putting in human terms, I made it. 
Because death seals the deal. I, I get that, being in the presence of the Lord. But I also, and we're going to see where this subject of rewards, your behavior now is going to affect the rest of eternity. And I would rather be a garbage person. Now, I know there's no garbage in heaven. Uh, I would rather be, a, I don't know, uh, someone that... Street clean. Well, there won't even be any dirt in the streets there. Uh, I don't know. I'd rather be the lowliest one in heaven and make it than be the highest one in hell. Drew. Yep. So as you even said, people will get to heaven and be like, Lord, I did this for you. Or I did that for you. Or I did this for you. Um, really, you know, they didn't do it under the context of loving the ways of God or loving the ways of God. So yep. I don't think it's part of their breathing into or something that they're still not saved. Yeah. And scripture is clear on that. You know, Apostle Paul talks about that in uh, what is Second Corinthians 9, verse 6, says that we were not to give reluctantly or under compulsion. There's all kinds of motive issues going on there. But at the same time, and this is what Wilkinson hits in his book over and over, it's not wrong to want to be rewarded on heaven's side. That's not wrong. And we're going to see that. And I, I, I just want to encourage you. And, I, and so I know I'm going against years and years of tradition uh, with this. But I would encourage you to take a look at those scriptures. And that's why we started with them. And let those scriptures speak to you. Somebody else? Yes, Jenna? One of the things that I've taught uh, people that uh, minister the gospel's sake, and, and pastors can do this, you can do all the right things for all the wrong right. reasons, and you won't be rewarded for it. Drew. I was just thinking in, in talking about, Colossians talks about keeping our eyes fixed on things that are above. Mm -hmm. So we don't necessarily, we shouldn't try to just keep our eyes on what we're going to get to. And I know that's what you're saying. Yeah. But our gaze is on things that are eternal and not above. Yeah. Yeah, and, and I guess that's the struggle with where I'm at. I'm in the last quarter of life, and it's like, how much do I want to invest on this side? I want to have enough to get me to my last heartbeat, but I don't want to have any more than what I need. I want to send all I can ahead. Yes. I would just encourage you to read the scriptures. That, that's why I listed all of them. Uh, it's a tough pill to it is. And I, that's why I established from the very beginning, I knew I was pushing back against, and, and Bruce did it. By the way, when he did this first, he went to some Bible college before he ever made the book, and he invited all kinds of professors and theologians in and says, I want you to hear what I, and he presented a thorough, much deeper discussion of that. And they got done, and they agreed that what he had to say was the truth. It's kind of a neat story when you read what the backdrop to the book. Uh, Eric, you had a comment? Yeah, uh, I've heard it said that heaven will be good for everybody. I mean, with the whole subject of reward and all that. But heaven will be good for everybody, but it is not going to be the same judgment. I mean, I don't know how that's always going to look, but I mean, there's, there's, it's 
Yeah. And how God's going to work all that out. But it's there. The scripture does teach it. Um, so you can send your reward on to heaven, or should you still serve, leave inheritance for your kids? I mean, it does tell you in the Bible. It does. It does. Kids. That's another balance. And it is. Uh, we are wrestling with that, too. And, and by the way, I think I've shared it with you in a previous series I've taught. Uh, Travis knows. You know, we had, we had two children. Nell's already on heaven's side, so she doesn't need anything on this side. Uh, so there won't be anything left for her uh, to do that. But uh, we've told our son, and you may think this is totally ruthless of me to say it, but he knows he's not getting near all our estate. In fact, I don't even think he's getting half of it. What? I'm just telling you. We've wrestled with, we, and this is we're wrestling out our own, working out our own salvation. And, and Travis knows that. I don't want him dependent on his dad for provision. He needs to be dependent upon the Lord and the Lord's provision on this side. And so uh, he's going to get a good chunk, if, assuming there's anything left when we're done. Who knows, you know? You go into a nursing care facility and whatever, you can spend everything you have. And so there may not be anything anyway. But assuming that there is... Uh, he'll get a chunk, but he doesn't get near all of it uh, because we want them. But, John, that's something you have to... Yeah, you have to struggle with that. It, and it, it's, it's messy. It's messy. Especially if you have to trust. Yep. Angie? That's true. Absolutely. Yes, absolutely. Would you like to elaborate on that? <laughs> yeah. I was... Uh, uh, one of the things that I told you that I'm doing, and I'm really... I think I'm, it's, it's proud in a good way. Uh, you know, I wrote a book, and I've got to print it. And, and, and got it here. Ashley Coleman edited it for me and got it printed. Amazon. It's amazing how fast you can get a book made. Uh, in about two weeks, she emailed the electronic copy, and I had the book in my hands in about two weeks. And so, uh, everybody in the church is going to. Uh, uh, every family will get one of those. And uh, just, I just wanted to leave something with them. And then I was talking with Ray Faust. He used to pastor E Free Church here in. Uh, and he attends our church, uh, Ben, now. And he talked about writing your memoirs. And that's what I would say, Angie. It would be neat that each one of you could write a memoir, your memoirs of your life, and leave that for your children. Be good. Somebody else? Yep. Absolutely. Uh, your life, what you do with it. Uh, and again, that's another thing we've been wrestling with. You know, a lot of people, they come to their senior years and it's like, well, Lord, I served you all my life and now we're going to go have some fun. Uh, and Joyce and I, we feel the clear mandate from God that uh, that's not going to happen. Anyone else? Okay, I want to challenge you. Take those scriptures. I, I knew I was going to come up against some thoughts. I, I want to challenge you. Don't approach this with how you feel, but approach this with what the scripture says. And so search the scriptures. Be a Berean, Acts chapter 17, verse 11. And do what Jesus said in Matthew chapter 22, verse 29. You are an error because you do not know the scriptures or the power of God, he said in that passage. So I'd encourage you to seek those out. Father, we thank you tonight. Uh, what, a, what a subject. What a subject. Help us, Lord, dig into your word. Speak to us, I pray. Amen. Bless you. You're dismissed. Thanks for being here.